Let me introduce to you, you guys have begun in your uh, Bible reading the book, of Josh, uh, the book of Joshua, so let me now give you a simple introduction to it. It's a fun read for many as it is filled with many stories such as the battle for Jericho, but it's also a book that is not always read properly, so my goal is to help you with that. It doesn't help, therefore, the one who is reading it when it's not read properly. It is a very important read. Uh, to, or, for you to read the book with the realization that the whole earth belongs to Yahweh, not individual people or nations. People don't own their nation. Yahweh owns the nation. People don't possess land. Yahweh owns the land. And so any nation that exists simply uh, exists because God has established their time and their boundaries. But the world is also under the power of sin and in rebellion against Yahweh. And what you are watching in the book of Joshua is where Joshua is used by God to bring the nation to Israel. And God gives the land to Israel. There are many who simply become very uh, upset in this day of social justice as they watch the wiping out of the people of Jericho and the taking of the land of Canaan. And they say, this is wrong, this is evil. Well, it perhaps would be evil except for the fact that it's God's. And he can do with it what he wants. And he promised it to the nation of Israel and he gives it to them. The nations are like any other nation, including America. We exist at God's good pleasure, and only as long as it's his pleasure to let us exist. These are people in the land of Canaan who are rebellious, idolatrous people under the ever-growing wrath of God. And the difference between them and their time of judgment and us is simply time. Israel now becomes the arm of judgment against these nations by Yahweh. So read it that way. Understand that Israel is used by God to execute his justice. It, it, it is a brutal read as you realize what the wrath of God looks like, that no one is spared in Jericho. No one is considered innocent. All are subject to his wrath and judgment. And if you are wise, then it should spur you on with regard to your faith in Christ Jesus. As you read it, the book, realize that it is at the end of 400 years of Israel's enslavement in Egypt, and then 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, watching all of their parents and grandparents die under the wrath of God themselves. They died in unbelief, and now finally, the people are ready to enter the land of promise. And so it begins with them still outside the land on one side of the Jordan River, and Joshua is now the new leader. It ends with the land in their power. It's divided up among the nations, I mean the tribes of Israel. And then Joshua gives final words to this very difficult people. There are three key characters, if you will, in the book. There is Yahweh, there is Joshua, and there are the people of Israel as a whole. And everything plays itself out through these three characters. You see the character of God as you read, and it will do you well to note what you learn about God as you read. His holiness, his wrath, his love of truth, his absolute faithfulness, and his mercy, and even tender care is evident. All of these and many more are chronicled in this book. And at the end of the book, we have the exhortation of Joshua to this nation, and it prepares us for the very sordid and sad tales that is the book of Judges.